What's up? How you doing, Sean? You guys doing well there in Miami? Hey, Karen. Boy, it sure was a good week of friendship camp. Kind of still on a high from it. It was such an amazing week. Incredible to be in person. Yeah, thank you, Karen. Give everybody another minute here to join us. Happy to be back. I thought about it last week and I was about to get on and I had all the kids from Friendship Camp behind me and we were gonna do a little noonday prayer, but uh, thank you to uh, Patricia for taking it for me last Tuesday because it would have been a little bit chaotic, I promise. It wouldn't be... Uh, Shall we say calm? <laughs> but I'll talk about that in a second. Let everybody know here that our reading today from our lectionary is Matthew 23, 13 through 26. It's Matthew 23, 13 through 26, if you'd like to read along. But let's take a breath. Thank you for being here with me. And let's spend a little time in prayer. We'll begin our order of service for noonday prayer on page 103 of the Book of Common Prayer. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Saying Psalm 119, Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and am determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute to my lips and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes forever and to the end. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. We have our reading from the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew twenty-three, thirteen through 26. 
But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you lock people out of the kingdom of heaven, for you do not go in yourselves, and when others are going in, you stop them. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cross sea and land to make a single convert, and you make the new convert twice as much a child of hell as yourselves. Woe to you, blind guides, who say, Whoever swears by the sanctuary is bound by nothing, but whoever swears by the gold of the sanctuary is bound by the oath. You blind fools. For which is greater, the gold or the sanctuary that was made of the gold? And you say, whoever swears by the altar is bound by nothing, but whoever swears by the gift that is on the altar is bound by the oath. How blind you are. For which is greater, the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred? So whoever swears by the altar swears by it and by everything on it. And whoever swears by the sanctuary swears by it and by the one who dwells in it. And whoever swears by heaven swears by the throne of God and by the one who is seated upon it. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tithe mint, dill, and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. It is these you ought to have practiced without neglecting the others. You blind guides, you strain out a gnat but shallow swallow a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup of the plate, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup so that the outside may become clean. The Gospel according to Matthew. <clears throat> so uh, it's kind of a little different than the blessings, you know, the Beatitudes. This is woe to you, Tudes. You know, he's getting on the, uh, the Pharisees. He's, and he's really just calling out some, you know, thoughts because... A lot of times we can think we're doing good things, but we might be really going against God's word. And I, I, we just said someone wished us a great friendship camp. A lot of people think, last week I got the chance to lead and staff and teach at an interfaith, basically vacation Bible school for elementary school children of all different faiths. And we all came together and we learned about each other's uh, religious backgrounds and we learned about who our superheroes are and how we can be superheroes in the world. And, and really we're just bringing people together in, in friendships, teaching um, blessed are those who are peacemakers. And some people would think, oh, we can't do that. You know, why aren't we all telling them all about Jesus? Or, you know, how can we have learn about different, different things? And I just think you hypocrites, you know, I hear, what about justice, mercy, and faith? You know, I want them to see the Christ in me so they can experience Christ's love. And I'm, I'm there to plant the seed, to let the seed grow. You know, and I, I think Christ would rather have us sharing friendships and, and love and, and working towards peace rather than banging people's head against the wall saying, oh no, you should believe this or you should believe that. What I think we really need to believe is that our God is a God of justice, mercy, and faith. And that God is there and will find a way into their heart uh, so they can know that they, everyone was created in love and that heaven's gates are open for them to understand and to one day grab onto and uh, I think you can help a lot more through love than you can with hate and uh, with rules. Uh, there are rules that we need to keep us safe, but there's also rules that might get in the way of sharing God's love. And so for me, I was just thinking about that. What am I holding on to that might be sacred cows <laughs> that aren't so sacred uh, and hold on to the love of God instead? So we'll continue on page. You want to come in? You can come in and pray with us, Susan. Susan Lyons, come in, grab a chair, and sit down with us.
Come on in. I've been in Christ Care <coughs> Group. Christ Care Group. Well, it's a blessing you have to come and share. Thank you. Susan's right here with us. Thank you. Uh, we're uh, we're going to continue on page 106. Thank you, Luke. Sure, I'm happy. Go ahead. Okay. We'll continue with our prayers. And if you have any prayers that you'd like for us to offer up, please add them to the comments. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, Lord, Lord, Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city with the Father and the Holy Spirit. You live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, we lift up to you those committed to our prayer list. We pray for the Episcopal Church, for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, the presiding bishop, Larry, our bishop. We pray for our clergy, Joanna, Michael, Patricia. And we pray for our rector who will be coming to us soon. And we pray for our staff and vestry. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Tanzania. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Stephen's in Blytheville, Calvary and Osceola. We pray for our executive council, our historiographer, and we pray for Michael McNeely. We pray for peace and end to racism, terrorism, oppression, poverty, pollution, and persecution. We pray for all of our staff, but it's day, today we say a prayer especially for Linda Blagg, our parish secretary. We pray for all of our parish ministries, but especially St. Mark's Library. We pray for the safety of first responders, healthcare workers, and those in the military, especially Megan, Sam, Breen, Marshall, Garrett, Kyle, and Chandler. We pray for families expecting children, especially Lewis and Libby Whitbeckwood, Hayward and Olivia Wetzel, and Sarah and Michael Drake. We pray for all parishioners who are in need, sick, or homebound, and for those commended to our prayers, Shirley, Jim, Judy, Sharon, Eleanor, and Carl. We pray for those celebrating birthdays and wedding anniversaries. May they have a wonderful celebration. And we pray for those who have died, especially Bess Wilson-Jones and Wesley Dotson. We give thanks for those who get to enjoy time on the lake. We ask your prayers for Patty, we lift up to you, Carl and Vicki. Rusty. And John Barn. And I give thanks for all the wonderful friendships that were made at Friendship Camp that last week. Thanksgiving for air conditioning. <laughs> Lord, thank you. 
And we do lift up to you all those things in our hearts that we have not or cannot name. Be with us and guide us and keep us on the road to your love, hope, and peace and joy. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. And thank you for being here. Thank what a wonderful little special. Everybody have a great day. Bye.